and this is that weird thing. <laughs> All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Collective Conversations. I'm your host, Mike Brewer, and I'm extremely excited about today's episode. Robert Turnbull has spent the last few decades making a dent in the multifamily universe. In the early innings, he spent time building out what is the modern day ILS. Fast forward to the present, Robert is building what I believe be but what I believe to be one of the most important pieces of the prospect journey, amongst other things. Robert is the president, COO, and founder of BetterBot. Robert, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Happy Friday. Oh, yeah. Friday it is. Woo! <laughs> Friday. There you go. Definitely. Hey, Robert, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I, I know you and I have oh. uh, known each other for, gee whiz, I, let's say better than 10 years, maybe 15 yeah. years. At least a decade plus. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And wow, I, how time has flown, isn't it? <laughs> Feels oh, like that, yesterday. Yeah, I just we have a few more gray hairs and that kind of oh, stuff. <laughs> I got a lot more than you. What are you talking about? I can't, <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, I still have some hair, so I'm happy. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, Robert, why why don't we start by just having you just give us the the thumbnail sketch of like early innings of you getting into the multifamily space and what you did and how that led to where you are today and what you're doing today. Yeah, it's funny. I think it's I think like 98 percent of people in our industry, I fell into multifamily. I mean, you hear that all the time. And I, I I'll spare you the details of how I fell in, but I got in back in 1999. And uh, and so there's this this I traveled around the country from 1999 to 2002 talking about this internet thing. Uh, so when I started a, my business partners and I we started ApartmentGuide.com in '99, uh, a few other ILSs over the years. And um, and so I just remember in, in San Antonio, Texas, this guy walked up after a speaking, and I was trying to convince people it was going to change the way people look for apartments. And this guy in 2002 said, uh, well, you're a really entertaining fellow, Robert, but you realize the Internet's like the CB radio of the 70s. It's it's just a passing fad. And I thought, my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> 2003, suddenly the light bulb went on and everybody was starting to use the Internet, both in the industry as well as the consumer. So that was really my start. And since then, I've just been keeping my eye on technologies and things I think are going to have uh, significant consumer impact as well as uh, industry impact. So that that's my abbreviated background, and that brings me to you know what I'm doing today with more automation technologies and conversational technologies. I I, I love this. I I love your story. I love that you have. I read a book recently called Looking Around the Corner, and you strike me a guy as a guy who is always looking <laughs> around the corner or seeing around the bend, right? And you're staying abreast of things that are going on and and how. A potentially a bigger, let's call it the Googles and the Apples and the Amazons of the world, how they are influencing consumer behavior. And then we sort of bring that down to what, what you're doing today with your, with uh, conversational commerce, so to speak. Is, is that fair to say? It, it is. And it's funny. Um, so I'm not the kind of guy who, so there's, when you look at new technologies, the types who actually invent the technology that shapes um, <clears throat> where consumers and people are going. I'm kind of the next one down, which is, okay, that's a cool technology, and I think <laughs> it's going to have a benefit. So I do like being on the early part of the adoption curve. And if I'm being really honest, that's fun, but sometimes it's hard because in our industry, as we've said before, although I think it's getting better, um, we are behind the curve. And so sometimes you can be a little too far ahead. And so you end up doing less, you do a lot of education at that point, but you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. That's the stuff that excites me and gets me, uh, I bound out of bed when I see something new that's fun that I think can have an impact on our industry. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think that's, that's so right. I, I think of, they're not coming readily to mind, but I think it's so many things that were uh, attempted to put in place in the multifamily space that just died on the vine. And it was only because the audience was not ready. And to your yeah. point, we were just we're just so far behind. <laughs> we are in, but I will tell you, I have noticed with this. Um, gosh, I don't mean to to say anything uh, about anyone of any generation, because I am in the older generation. But I do notice this younger generation seems to be adopting these technologies. Uh, there's some real up and comers in our industry uh, that are in their kind of late twenties, early mid thirties, and um, they are used. They're, they've never known a world without the internet. And so they are more inclined to understand and adopt these technologies faster. So I do see a little bit of an acceleration in this area in our industry. And that's very, 
um, that that's encouraging. That's encouraging. Yeah, yeah. You think about it. I mean, to your point, they they grew up with a device in their hand um, from the very beginning, and digital yeah. devices, I think they're called, and and it's almost they have an expectation, right, as a consumer, that if your if your brand is not adopting the technologies that that sort of play along with the way that they consume content or actually secure and procure experiences and places to live and things of that nature, then you're you're not going to die on the vine, but you're certainly not going to be at the top of their list. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And you'll notice too with consumers, uh, the one of the indicators I always look at is consumer behavior, <clears throat> consumer expectations. Um, you know, it's just to apply that. <clears throat> sorry, uh, just to apply that to multifamily. Uh, you, you you watch patterns such as what's happening with um, the ability to order anything online to have delivered to your house in the terms of food, the ability to buy an airline ticket right now, pick the aisle seat, uh, get a hotel upgrade. I can literally do anything from my phone and from my sitting right here. Uh, and so what's happened is it's created this sense of now. And, and, and where we are trying to keep up with that or we're trying to meet that expectation within multifamily is by providing real-time immediate information 24-7, 365. Um, and that's really what got my interest in automation and conversational technology, um, because, you know, just for in our world, we see 60% of conversations happening after 6 p.m. and before 8 a.m. This is when people are 2 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock at night. They're on Yelp. They're on Google My Business. They're on these places. And they don't want to fill out a web form. They don't want to have something be back to them seven hours, eight hours, two days later. They want the information now. That's right. And that's what really intrigued me about all of this automation. And it's more than just us. There's a lot of automation technologies coming to our space. And I love it. I love it. Um, you know, there's not a one size fits all. But I think this is going to benefit, benefit our industry, create efficiencies, and, um, and get uh, uh, and benefit the consumer as well. Definitely. Do you, so speaking of the different ways that, that, this technology, this conversational commerce type technology, or or bots for listeners and for for our viewers, we're we're speaking uh -huh. about bots, really. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I in the early innings, you you think about your bank, right? You call the bank up, and you could learn what your deposit was, or or maybe really really early innings. I I remember when I had a dial phone before mobile phones. You could actually <laughs> dial this telephone number, and uh -huh. you could get the weather, right? That's a to me. An oh early my gosh, innings. I remember that. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. To me, that was a super early inning bot right that told uh -huh. me because that wasn't a person that was telling me what the temperature was outside so right it, so if you fast forward to today and you think about how bots influence or or sort of add value to a consumer's journey where do you see the most value coming in if you want to apply that to multifamily space yeah where's the most value today yeah oh that's a great question um <clears throat> okay so where there value and where there isn't, uh, where bots can really serve value and consumers do like that is when it's just, it's information they can get quickly, non-empathetic information. So what's your pet policy? Uh, you know, what, do you, what kind of your availability? Uh, standard 80% of the questions that people are just repetitive. I mean, you, a leasing agent doesn't need to be doing that all day. And quite frankly, a person doesn't want to call an email to get it. So they want to get that information very quickly, and that's where bots come in, and people like that. Where bots are never, ever going to replace humans is empathy. Mm. Uh, humans have a natural empathy, and so when sometimes someone at their property or someone who's looking has a story they need to tell, they need someone to understand it and help them think through what their options are. A bot is never going to do that. It's never going to replace that. And so the empathy <laughs> is where I think humans will always be uh, needed and bots will never uh, be able to replace. That that makes sense to me. Um, although I have been surprised in the past where technology actually. So someone's going to invent the empathetic person, right? Oh, yeah. Empathetic. Wouldn't, bot. Wouldn't, I mean, hey, wouldn't that be cool? I think we're a little ways away from that. But you know, actually, if we if we're kind of just goofing around here, uh, when you look at uh, you know Alexa, hey, tell me a joke. Right. <laughs> Right. right, if it's a funny joke, it made me laugh. I smiled, so maybe that's a little empathy. But that's as, that's as far as I've seen it goes so far. Yeah, I I think you're right. We're if if that were ever a thing, it would be very far down the the, the path of things. But this brings me back to an interesting thing. I know that uh, 
with your company, you you actually started out with NLP or natural language processing, mm -hmm. and maybe you can define yeah. that for our audience. And then yeah. you switched gears and went to, uh, I, I know it is pathbound, but I think you call it guided conversation, but maybe you can tell us what yep. those two terms mean and the experience okay. that you've had. Yeah. And so um, when I first started before he built out BetterBot, <clears throat> um, I was working with IBM Watson, Get Jenny, Chat Fuel, Robotify, all the all the real first um, entrants into what we call generalist bot technology. And I thought it was so cool to solve some problems. Um, when we started building out BetterBot, we built the largest natural language processing. And basically that means you can talk or you could type sentence structure and it would interpret what it thinks you're going for and then provide an answer. And when NLP works, it is really kind of cool. It's very cool. Uh, the problem that NLP has is the best in the world right now is IBM Watson still. And they are only at a 70% completion rate. That means the bot does get confused about 30% of the time. And that's because you can say the same words and have five different meanings. And here we go with sentiment and empathy. The right. bot simply does not understand that. And so it will get confused. Now, in the, in the, in, in the multifamily world, 70% sounds great, but it's not. That means 30% of the time, your renter, your consumer is getting frustrated. That is not a good brand experience. So we looked at some of the others like uh, like um, Drift and Intercom and noticed that the biggest generalists are starting to move to what they call guided conversation methodology. Well, that just it still uses natural language. It's just not processing it. The difference is the natural language is in, in intent. So when I click on a button and swipe and tap, and people don't want to type stuff in. So I don't want to go on my phone and go to a bot and type a bunch of stuff in. I want to touch and swipe. Yep. One reason guided conversation works well. Another one is because the bot knows exactly what you're asking. There's no confusion and you don't have what we call abrupt stops. It actually can go to completion. Um, and so once we switched over to guided conversation methodology, GCM, uh, we started noticing two to three times the completion, five times the appointments. And that really was a giant leap forward for us. That That makes complete sense to me. And it's just for our audience, it's, what, what we're referring to is you, you in essence, bake in the answers that the bot is going to give to the consumer. Yeah. You bake those yeah. in on the front side. So that's yeah. the guided part of the conversation. It is. And so sometimes we'll, just say, we'll also say, oh, you're a decision tree <laughs> or you don't use AI. And like, well, no, actually, that's not true. We are not a decision <laughs> tree. Um, after, we just greeted our 100 millionth prospective renter, uh, we have completed 8 million conversations, uh, BetterBot, and just in the last several years, and scheduled over half a million appointments. So we've learned an awful lot. And in that time, we have what we do is we understand in the process, if you are selecting this button, you're more likely to go down here. So the intelligence of our bot serves up the information we think you're most likely going to go to next. That is true guided conversation. It's not a decision tree. It's guiding them through. And let's be honest, we're guiding them through to get the information so we can get that appointment scheduled. We're That's guiding right. them there. That's what we want. That's right. That's why we have deployed that methodology. What, what I hear you saying there is you're you're guiding them with their with intent in mind. So your your algorithms are really baked around the intent in, in their prediction of the intention of that they're going to make based on Bingo. answers. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's predicting it, it's predicting with less failure. Uh, because you're also giving them multiple options. And so they can pivot any number of directions and go into any number of places to get that content very quickly. It, what's interesting is the average live chat conversation, and this is the other thing, we're trying to replace live chat. Live chat just does not work in multifamily for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, because they're just people on the other end really aren't available. And um, the average live chat conversation lasts between eight, depending on the company, 12, eight to 12 minutes. Um, the average bot conversation is 90 seconds. So people are getting in all the, yeah, all they're getting all that information within 90 seconds and they're getting a call to action. So the consumer benefited too, because they got their information faster, better brand experience. It makes total sense to me. So let, let's go back to something you said about, um, and, or maybe this was in our uh, conversation before we hit the record button, but you still have NLP happening <laughs> at Metterbot, right? You, you have a, yeah. I'm going to call it a data lake. You have a huge like, yeah. ocean of data right now. What what are your intentions with that? Ocean? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're feeding the beast, feeding the beast. We've got this, the NLP I mentioned a long time ago, we put all the apartment 
lexicon and language and and we got pretty good. We got to about 65, 70%. So we were happy, but it just wasn't, wasn't hundred percent. So in those years, what we happens is when people will, if the bot can't answer a particular question, they'll put like a, a note and say, Hey, I need a, a leasing person to contact me. And so it'll, we know all these notes, literally thousands upon thousands a day, we're seeing patterns. And so we're feeding the beast with all of the questions that are being asked and we're refining, refining, refining the sentiment scale. So what happens is you look at this and then you start to propose an answer and then there's a confidence scale. This is where the algorithm gets smarter. And so we see, okay, sentiment high, low, confidence in the answer high, low. And if you're at about a 70% confidence that that's the right answer, that's not good enough. We wanna get to 95% confidence scale. Once we can get to that, we will start slowly interjecting aspects of NLP in the bot to complement our guided conversation. There is a way to do that, and it's hard to show that on, on air, so to speak. But there is a hybrid solution, and our goal is to get to 95% confidence level. And then we will start introducing NLP back into the mix. And, and so if you were to anticipate or sort of forecast where that introduction would be, so some mm -hmm. of those first introductions, would you, are you willing to share some of that? <laughs> yes. Now, my business partner may uh, slap me when I get off the phone, <laughs> off because, <laughs> but, but honestly, we're actually just about there now. Um, we're going to be getting, we're, we're going to start introducing the right kind of NLP. The, uh, the best way I can describe it is NLP with very, very defined guardrails. So we provide the best, absolute best experience for, for our clients' prospects. That's important. We have to maintain that 95% CSAT score, customer satisfaction, and we want to make sure we stay there and provide a great brand experience for our clients. So we will not introduce that until we're ready, and I think we're probably about another month or two away. So I think in March, you're going to start, March, April, you'll start to see that coming from us. Oh, I, I see a March, April episode of Collective Conversations <laughs> where we have you back to talk about that. <laughs> I'll, I'm there. I'll come with data. I'll come with data. I. I, so, so if we were to sort of crystal ball thing for a second, um, do, can you reasonably imagine a day where you have, so I, I, you, let's pretend for a second, we each have our own conversational agent, right? Or mm. my virtual assistant that is bot driven, mm. right? So Mike has a virtual assistant, maybe he's called Mike in the metaverse, whatever. <laughs> but he, if, if I want to find an apartment, and I don't really want to do that because I'm not interested in doing it, the exercise of doing it. Could mm. I have my conversational agent or my virtual assistant contact BetterBot and those two engage in this sort of light level conversation and only engage me at the point where I've got, you know, a real, they've narrowed it, right? So I get to go to the one I want to see because these guys figured it out. Oh, uh, yes. Whatever you call these. Did you see the? Uh, did you see that video? I think it was a video that when Google had their Google Assistant call to get a hair appointment. Yes, it's that. I, I think that's kind of what you're talking about. It's like I'm going to have my Google Assistant talk to the hair place. For all we know, the hair place is using a Google, an assistant. Right. And so the <laughs> digital assistants are talking to each other, and then that's then feeding back the the appointment to the relevant places. Um, I think that's that is super cool. I think it's future state. Uh, do I think that can happen? Absolutely. They're learning algorithms about our buying behavior are out there today. Amazon has a ton of information on this, like scarily so. Yeah. So it's built psychographic and demographic profiles on all of us uh, with predictive buying behaviors. So do I think that can be utilized to have digital agents or information exchange? Absolutely, yes. I get a little nervous with too much of my, my information out there, quite frankly, and that's where I get uncomfortable with that whole concept. But we're willing to give up a little bit of privacy for a little bit of convenience. So we'll see how that plays out. But I think I think that'll happen. It's already starting to, to some extent. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, I imagine like if I run out of toothpaste, I can say, "Hey, Alexa, you know, do do your thing." But in mm -hmm. the future, it's Alexa knows I'm about to run out of toothpaste. <laughs> right. And then Amazon sends a drone to your house in five minutes to get your uh, to drop it off on your doorstep. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Hey, I, I want to switch gears or take a hard right here just for a second because you you put on a you put on an event uh, recently in oh, Atlanta, yeah. and uh, I, I the feedback I heard from the event I wasn't able to attend, but the feedback that I heard uh, was just off the charts. And I I want to give you a, a chance here to talk about that because I think it's it's awesome. What you put together oh, yeah. 
was just awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, so it's called Multifamily Unplugged. Um, <laughs> it was born of the under, so like you, I've been in the industry a long time and I've amassed friends. And, and so I just started asking, like yourself, and I, well, you and I talk about this, is w- yeah. what are we, what do you need, what is missing? And what I heard collectively was we would like an opportunity to socialize with their peers, but to group solve. We're having issues and challenges, some successes in this area we'd like to share, but I'd like to hear what other level executives are seeing and how they're approaching some of these solves. Now, that could be topics on this one was diversity, equity, and inclusion. We had um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, st- the staffing shortage. Um, we had, well, how do we sort through all the vendor suppliers out there? But what this is, is really a co-host. These are industry executives hosting it for industry executives. Uh, it is, is it a non-vendor event? And what happened was, as the topics came up, eh, it takes about a minute, and all of a sudden the magic happens. <laughs> Everyone starts talking and sharing, and then the nuggets start coming out. And we captured this on video because I just wanted to be able to share. So we're, we did it in Atlanta. We're doing them in about 10 to 12 markets this year. And our goal is to really start grabbing these nuggets and these learnings and share from one market to another company to another market and they and start to do a larger group solve. And I just feel like that is an untapped thing uh, people don't necessarily want to go to trade events and walk through trade floors. You know, maybe they're not getting a lot of information relevant to the topics they're looking for at these events. So let's pick the topics we want to talk about. Well, let's have a and let's have some fun. So we did yeah. it at a prohibition bar called the Red Phone Booth, and they have a, it's, they had to have a code to get in, and it was a lot of fun. People go to the phone booth dial and they got in, and we did it in the mafia kitchen in the back. Uh, so <laughs> everyone had a good time, and uh, we will be doing more throughout the throughout the uh, throughout the year. You know what I, I, I love about that? If, if you compare and contrast that to the, let's say, the NAA event or, or some of those other big events, which I which I do think have value. There's certainly, oh, sure. a, tremendous, Absolutely. Tremendous, yeah. <laughs> certainly a tremendous amount of fun in, in the parties that are put together and and experiences that, that you get to participate in. Uh, and certainly the speakers are, are off the charts uh, for all of the, the educational components to that. But what what is lacking, I think, it, this is one guy's opinion is the intimacy sure. and what you created yeah. there at the phone booth was just an intimate conversation with 30 plus or minus people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good point. Like mind. Right. Yes. And it, yeah, it's a great, it's a great point. We didn't want a hundred people there. We wanted 30. Uh, I think after 30, it becomes a little unmanageable and people don't necessarily feel comfortable to talk. Uh, 30 was the right number and we had 30 people there. And, um, and you could tell the people who jump in right away and they have lots of opinions and thoughts. And then you could tell people a little bit later. And at the end, even the quiet people were coming in and they had some of the best comments. Uh, so it is, it's a more intimate. And what I loved about it when it was over, people stayed for two hours and just had great conversations, really enjoyed each other's companies. And it really fostered this camaraderie in this local market and to be honest each market's yeah there's similarities but they also have uniqueness so atlanta's facing some different stuff that dc might not be facing that san antonio night might not be facing so i love that it was it was it was local and it was intimate and, and you know i think it's um you know in in the let's say 10 15 20 years ago probably more like 20 or 30 years ago there was a real sort of protectionistic view of things meaning if i went across the street to get some market survey information nope you can't have it and you know there's mm. a sort of barrier to, to information and i think fast forward to today there, there's not much one can share in a room that it hasn't already been published on the internet somewhere where you can't read oh, yeah, some, so it seems, right? yeah yep yeah so there's there is this what i love about this is the breaking down of barriers and making it comfortable and and safe to share information that frankly, is not proprietary and, and really is po- it's really problem solving for things that we're all contending with right now. I love that. Yeah, look, we're all consumers um, in one form or another. And wouldn't it be wonderful to know that people on the other end of whatever is I'm buying are trying to figure out how to make things better for me. And that's really what we're talking about is how do we make things better for our people that work for us, for our industry and for the consumer, the renter that we serve. Um, there, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of wealth of institutional knowledge that's been amassed. And uh, another thing I saw at this event, we talked about the younger group. Uh, I saw some of the, the older guard, which is me, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> sharing learnings uh, to the younger guard. Um, and you can see some light bulbs going off and they're going to take that and carry the torch. And we're just going to continue to make this better. I love this industry. I love the people in this industry. It, it, it's, it's a genuinely very thoughtful, inclusive industry. I've all, and I've been out for three years. You're allowed to leave for three years, but you must come back. Yeah. So when I was out and I thought, why did I ever leave this industry? I just really love the people. I love the, I love the products. I love everything about it. Um, and so, and people are willing to share information. Do, do, you, do you think, um, do you think that is a function of when, when I think about serving a, a higher purpose, right? You really want to be a, one guy's opinion. You really want to be purpose driven in your life because it is that mm-hmm. thing that gets you out of bed in the morning. And, and as it relates to this industry, do you think that higher purpose is that you were serving up a, a home to, to mm-hmm. people? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as a function of that, the people who work in this industry really buy into that and really take that seriously and take it to heart. And that's a great, I have never thought of that perspective. And I think you're right. You, people who go into the healthcare industry often say, well, you kind of have to have a an orientation or a mission, right, to, to go into the healthcare and to certain industries. You just need a personality type. You are providing a home for somebody. And there is a certain personality type that I think enjoys that aspect of providing a home for for folks in all across the country. And you're right. You're right. Um, I had never thought about that. It, yeah, it just, it just seems like a service a calling to service, so to speak, and and we're really in yeah. service of our consumers. Yeah, you can tell the yeah, and you can tell the people who probably don't have the calling. <laughs> <You gotta persuade. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they maybe need to go somewhere else. But uh, yeah, yeah, you, you're right. But you know that you can tell the ones that are great. I mean, who hasn't? I've lived in apartments. And actually, we we moved recently, sold our house. The kids are at empty nesters, so we we did a little high rise living. Man, you can tell who the favorites are down on the leasing team, and they're just very welcoming and very thoughtful and very servant oriented. Um, and then you have those that are that are not as much. And those are the people, the ones that are, the ones that are oriented and and, and, and destined for this kind of service. Oh yeah, yeah. most definitely. Yeah, they're they stand apart for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in any industry for that matter. But yeah, definitely. Um, Okay, so as it was as sort of draw to a close here, is there is there anything you'd share with our audience? And by the way, we're both we do this in video and we share it out on LinkedIn, but we also do the we we strip out the audio and share it out as a podcast on Spotify and and Apple and wherever you get your podcast. But uh, anything you'd share with our audience uh, to include, like I don't know, favorite books you're reading or other things you might be up to these days? Huh. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, okay, um, the one that I've think is anybody who's ever started a business and it's called scaling up. Oh, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's one that uh, my business partner reads, he's read it 12 times. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it through it. The first, Oh, there you go. There you got it. There you scaling up. Yep. Um, anyone who's in your role, cause I know you've built and you kind of ebbs and flows, right? So you sell and you, so you're in the same, you're in the same boat. You, you hit these plateaus, right? And you got to figure out what the next step and what's, I think what's comforting is to know that you're not alone. This has happened many times. This is normal. Uh, Here's some ideas of how you need to think differently. And so I love these kinds of books because they make you feel like, okay, this isn't unique to me. There's a pathway forward. That also helps you celebrate some of your successes. If you hit certain milestones, you can look back and go, you know, we've made it this far. This is great. So scaling up is one. Anyone who wants to build a business is in any stage of that uh, should definitely be reading that book. Uh, I, I I love it. That that's one of my favorite books. So yeah, yeah. But I right. just happen to have it right there. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. So we're reading it again uh, in at, at Radco. So uh, Mark, you and you'll read it every time you get to a different phase. You can read it again. It has a told, totally new meaning, just depending I, yeah. on what stage you're in. Yeah, it's amazing in that way. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Robert, I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your uh, yeah. this venture of building out BetterBot and uh, sharing a little time with our audience. I definitely want to have you back as you sort of introduce new things in the BetterBot ecosystem, so to speak. That'd be awesome. If you Love it. Want. Not at and, all. And Mike, I really appreciate you taking the time and having me on. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Take care of yourself. And for everyone else, we'll see you again next time. Take care.